add to winners and cut losses. I'm going to explain it all here in detail in this video. And this video is going to be different from a lot of the videos you see, because I'm actually going to show you the things that I'm talking about live starting right now. We're going to hit the share screen button. I'm going to go here. I'm on Bitcoin futures on MEXC. We're going to do some stupid, simple analysis and just say, you know what? It looks like it's going up. It looks like it's in an uptrend. We're going to get into a buy. And I'm going to show you I'm going to manage this position in real time. We're just going to buy 100 USD Tether. <laughs> this is one of my little gambling accounts here that I just have in crypto to play around futures. So we're going to buy. Sweet. So we bought 100 USD Tether worth of Bitcoin. <laughs> now, while this trade starts to play out, you and me, my friend, we're going to go to the charts. We're going to go to the good old trading view charts. And we're going to do some really high production quality analysis. We're going to do some really high production quality drawings so I can lay out the conceptualizations behind this. Just remember, trading is risky and most people lose money. You're probably going to lose money. Even if you listen to every single thing I say, it's ratings not suitable for all investors. You should consult the licensed financial services provider before placing trades in any damn financial market since you're probably going to lose. But, you know, all that aside, if you're crazy enough to keep watching, let's go ahead and get into it. The theory behind market structure is just looking at higher highs and higher lows and lower lows and lower highs and whether or not price is just refusing to make any highs or lows. This gives us three typical market environments, price making lower lows and lower highs, which some people call a downtrend, price just failing to break previous lows or highs, which some people call a range, and then price making higher highs and higher lows, which is called an uptrend. So the idea behind getting into trades is such that you position yourself in such a way where if the trading idea plays out, you just make a little bit more when you win versus what you lose when you're wrong. Tom Hugard's book, The Best Loser Wins. I can't do his deep voice. Tom, you've got a really sexy voice in case you ever watched this video. Great book, man. He showed a study in which they, they reviewed like millions of trades and essentially found that roughly 60% of trades are winning from retail traders and 40% of trades are losing. Gold sticker for you guys. You you win 60% of trades, you must be killing it. But wait, Tom found out something very interesting. On the 60% of trades that people won, they made about half of what they lose whenever they lose. So whenever you win 60% of the time, say you make $50, but whenever you lose, you only lose 40% of the time, right? You get a good win rate. But when you lose that 40% of the time, you lose $100. $100 is double what $50 is. This is not a profitable trading approach. My trading approach, I trade with essentially starting off trades at a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. If it starts going against me, I typically exit and I lose max, usually one unit of risk in most scenarios. For me, I risk $5,000 per trade. $5,000 per trade, closing losses early, adding to winners and letting the winners run. Last week doing this, I just made uh, $35,000. And then from crypto was $40,000. I made like $75,000 last week just doing this. I've been trading for eight years. Six of those years have been profitable. And I've been calling out literally all my live trades for free in my Telegram channel, which I literally called all of these out. Every single trade I took last week, I called out the full analysis and everything on my Telegram channel. If you hit the first link in the description below, it's going to take you to my website. <laughs> on my website, it's this thing, this free Telegram channel thing right here. Click that. It's going to take you to my Telegram channel. It's 57,000 members who follow me right now, every day, breathing down my neck as I trade live. And I've been running this free Telegram channel for almost six years, about five and a half years right now. You can see all this live. I'm not talking out my ass. I get to talk really delusionally confident about this because I've been doing it live for so long. I know what I'm talking about. I know what works and I know what doesn't. And what I do know works for me is that if I make a little bit more of my winners than what I lose on my losers, even if I have a 50% win rate or less, I always make profit long term, given a large basket of trades over an extended period of time. In my case, it's been over six years of been profitable. So that said, let's look at some of my wins and losses. This Euro USD trade, you're going to notice there's three trades here. But wait, why is the three trades? It's interesting, Nick. All of them were closed at the same time. Well, that's because this was one setup. This was closed at 1612. It was about $15,000 on those winning trades. That's one basket of trades. Here's a second basket of trades. <laughs> These were all closed at 49. It's the third basket of trades. And then here is uh, another basket of trades. These two right here. So let's look at the win rate, shall we? This was trading outcome one. That was a winning trade. This was trading outcome two. That was a losing trade. This is trading outcome three. This was a winning trade. This was an outcome four. Those two trades were net losing trades. So with that, Let's go ahead and just do some simple math here. You'll notice on the winners here, whenever I won this one outcome and I was adding to the winners, 
that this ended up being a $15,000 profit. You're gonna notice here on New Zealand dollar JPY, I had three positions because this started off going into profit as a profitable position, but then it broke out of structure and I cut the losses short. This resulted in about a $5,000 loss or about one unit of risk for me. And the reason this was such a small loss compared to, you know, instead of being a $15,000 loss with three losers, 5K each, is because I always move the invalidation slash stop loss areas a lot closer to the entries as the trade begins to move into profit. And you get to do that when you add to winning trades. You can't do that whenever you add to losing trades. I add to losing trades less than 5% of the time. And the 5% of the time on average that I do add to losing trades, it's because I pre-planned it that whenever I enter a trade, I'm going to use an appropriate position size and a wide enough invalidation slash stop loss area that if it goes into drawdown to the next zone, I can just comfortably add there and I've already pre-planned the risk. But most of the time, I'm generally not adding to many losing trades. That's generally when trades start going into profit. <laughs> so I lost 5K here, but I made 15K here on the first ones. This next basket of winning trades, this is roughly was like 15 grand on Euro USD. <laughs> Five trades. That means my first position started and then I had four add-ins as I added as it was moving into profit. And then I closed it in a huge profit. <laughs> then I had another losing basket of trades here on USD CAD. <laughs> This was about $2,000 of loss. So this was one unit of loss at 5K for the NZDJPY trades. For USDCAD, it was only like 2K of loss. That's like less than half of one unit of risk for me. This is like you risk $100 uh, on a trade, but then you closed it when it was in $40 loss. This started to go into profit, then it came back, and then I closed it as it invalidated and broke out of its trend. Very, very simple, right? It's just it literally you enter a trade. Start with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. And if it starts playing out, add to it, let it go to your final profit target. And if it doesn't start playing out and it looks sketchy, simply close the trade at a loss. It's not a big deal. A lot of people have trouble doing this right here because of their psychology. Now, when I say psychology, I'm not talking about some, some pie in the sky, crazy, stupid, stupid shit here. I'm not talking about, you know, you need to get your psychology right so that you can ex properly execute the smart money concept, Wagyu beef, bullish accumulation, um, a fair value distribution gap, liquidity spike, stop hunt, market manipulation, Kobe steak, medium rare, Wagyu beef, bullish candlestick pattern strategy. We're not going to play games here. And I'm not going to make fun of those people because I want to set the good moral example here in this channel and I want to be mature and I don't want to make fun of those people because that's just, that's not, it's not in my character to do that. I just want to, I want to get back to the video. I want to focus and you need to stop distracting me with all that smart money. Institutional order block. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really need to let that go at some point, don't I? It's been years. Anyway, that being said, you don't have to do any mental gymnastics to look at the fact that whenever you are adding to trades and they go into profit, but whenever you are losing trades and they're going into loss, you're adding to those winning trades and you're cutting those losses early. However, a lot of this psychology, to be more specific, comes down to fear, risk aversion, fear of loss, fear of accepting and crystallizing a loss. Tom Hugard talks in his book, The Best Loser Wins. Traders are afraid to crystallize their loss. They're afraid to say, shit, I'm in a losing trade. I risked $100 on this trade and it's $100 loss. And it's at the area I said I was going to close at whenever it reaches it. You know, maybe some people you get automatically stopped out if you place a hard stop. I don't place hard stops. I just set alerts and I manually manage everything based on the price section. However, most of my losses when I lose reflect between one to two R loss. Oftentimes it's less than what I planned I would lose. And every now and then it's a little bit more than I planned to lose, but it's still structured and contextualized. So with that said, it doesn't bother me when I lose because I've already pre-planned it and I've already accepted the stats. I go into a trade knowing I'm probably not going to have any more of a better win rate than random chance. This is if you enter randomly on the chart. You are completely mindless. You are a chimpanzee shitting in your hand and throwing it at the charts and just entering ran <laughs> randomly. <laughs> and, and, and then you enter with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio and you just let it play out. You take a hundred random trades like that with exactly a one to one risk reward ratio and an e equidistant like target and stop. So like say you risk 20 pips to make 20 pips. If you just let that play out, it's going to be roughly 50, 50. You don't believe me. Go and try it for yourself. Go into trading view back testing mode. Go look at your past trades. Go do whatever you want. That is what the case is. It's 50, 50. It moves up or down, right? Not that complicated. If you figure it out that the market goes up or down, it's a 50 50 chance gold sticker for you you're, you're getting somewhere and you're probably at least going to be break even because if you do that randomly enter with one to one risk reward ratios you're break even considering 90 percent of people lose money that's a hell of a lot better to break even because you're doing better than 90 percent of people who completely suck at trading but how do we get you from break even into actually being profitable while i cannot guarantee you anything and you're probably going to keep losing money because most people who try to trade are just going to simply lose money what i can say is that adding to winning trades and then cutting losing trades early 
have helped me become way more profitable than I have been ever in my trading career as I've continued to develop as a trader and develop the mental fortitude over the past six years of trading. That said, it can sometimes be very difficult for people to look at a losing trade and see, wow, it's at a loss. I don't want to crystallize this. I don't want to move the loss from my open account balance to my trading to my closed account balance. I, I, I'm fearful of this happening. I do not want to do this. I, I don't want to take the loss. And so it, it's just you have a fear of loss. You don't want to crystallize it. However, what you're forgetting is that if you close it at a loss because it's simply not working and you don't even think twice about it, you're like, oh, nope, it's not working. I'm out. Bye. So you exit. If it starts going back into profit, you don't have to sit there on the sidelines and obsess over like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm so sad. I was in that trade and now it's going to profit. Oh, so sad. Well, guess what? If you think it's going to still go to the final target from your first trade that you originally entered, you can just re-enter the trade. Yeah, sure, you're getting a slightly shittier entry, and sure, you had a little bit of a loss, but then if the same idea is playing out, and you're sitting there just obsessing like, nope, I, I, look, I took the loss, and I can't re-enter the trade. If you're, if, if you're doing that, you're really just capping yourself, because if you still think the idea is going to play out, and the market is showing evidence in the price action that it's actually going back up the other way, why not just re-enter? So it's not that big of a deal whenever you close at a loss, because you know the next trade is just right around the corner. By having this approach, getting the hell out of losing trades quick with zero emotions, you have to be a nihilistic, degenerate gambler. <laughs> you have to be a nihilistic, stoic, degenerate gambler. This is what I'm teaching here in this channel. Be, be a gambler. Nihilistic, stoic, degenerate gambler. To just close trades whenever you see that they're losing and then add to trades whenever you see that they're winning. Another huge problem I see is that people are afraid to add to their winners. They're afraid. They're like, I should probably just close right now. The problem with that is whenever you close your profitable trades too early, you end up having an inverted thing. Again, this is all my trading history. This is all my free Telegram channel. First link in the description. Click it. You can join my free Telegram channel right now. You can be there in the next 10 seconds. You can literally see everything. I share my analysis, my trades, everything live every single day with insights, helpful tips and tricks and blah, blah, blah. Even though there's not really any tricks or secrets or anything. I just share everything in there. Been doing it for years. You can see literally all of this. With this right here, if you hold your losses longer, but you're very quick to get out of your profitable trades, you end up having an inverted red and blue color scheme here in your layout here. So if you want to invert the color scheme, then then do me a favor. If you just really hate making money, continue adding to every losing trade. If it keeps going into drawdown, just add to the losses. If you just hate money, do that. If you love money, which they say the fear of money, the, the, the love of money is the root of all evil, but I don't really believe that. I think that, you know, a healthy love of money is decent because money can solve most of people's problems. But let's just say it this way. If you care a lot about making money and you want to make a, a lot of money when it comes to trading, I'm of the opinion, non-financial advice as a generalized suggestion for education and information purposes only. I'm of the opinion that if you just add to those trades, then you make more money in the long run. It works for me. It's worked for thousands of people that I've taught. It's just the same old stuff over and over and over. And it makes a lot of sense whenever you think about it. If you want to have more blues and the blues are higher numbers than the reds in your trading terminal, add to winning trades and cut losing trades short. You develop it with experience. The psychology behind it, the fear of loss, this and that. You just have to get used to looking at the chart, which we are now going to do on Bitcoin. And if it's a losing trade, you just cut it without emotions. And if it's a winning trade, you add to it and you hold it until your final target is reached when you believe there is likely to be a big reversal. Now, Bitcoin, you'll see, we are destroying it. We are killing it. We've made three cents. We've made 36, 3.6 cents on this Bitcoin trade. So obviously this is, a you know, I'm, I risk, I don't even know how much on this trade. Barely, right? It's 100 USD tether. However, the concept remains. If this had broken below this support level, then I would have just closed it and said, we're going to wait for the next trade. When the next trade presents itself, everything will be okay. We'll take a new trade. Now, some people might say, well, it's in profit. I don't know, man. Shouldn't we get out, bro? Should we, should we take the profits here? No. What I'm going to do, full degen, 100% gambling mentality, just kidding, is I'm going to add a, uh, another buy. So essentially, I've added another 100 USD tether, right? So I've doubled my position. This is like me saying, if I've gotten into a trade <laughs> and... Here, we'll go, we'll go into last week. I'm going to show you guys. This is a, another trade here. I've added in the GBP USD. It's going down. Here we go. All right, perfect. That's how it looks whenever you're in open profit sometimes. You can see, whenever I add to trades, I generally just use the same position size. This is a Euro AUD. I had added to that, so 240 lot sells. This is GBP USD based on the original invalidation distance and risk. It was a 12.5 lot for the first position. As it started to go into profit, I kept adding more and more and more and more and more. Then whenever it finally fell... 
right? Because I was stacked into cells. It was like a downtrend. It was a break and retest of a support resistance zone. A couple very simple reasons for entering a trade. Like, no, it's in a downtrend and it's pulled back and it's at a resistance zone. I just think it might go down. Genius, right? With a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. So genius. I have so many gold stickers. I can't even wear all of the little gold stickers that my teachers gave me because it would just blind you guys. And I know my, my bald head is already too bright. You can barely even accept that what I'm saying in this video is objective reality because it just seems too good to be true that if you just make more on your winners than you lose on your losers that you'll be profitable. I know that that's hard. That's hard to handle. Completely get it. But it is objectively the case that it is true for me that if I add to winners and then I cut losers short, that I make more money trading long term. So when we go back in here and we go and we look at this Bitcoin trade, this Bitcoin trade has continued to go into profit. Now, where would a good profit target be for the sake of this video so that you don't have to sit here for 10 years watching this Bitcoin trade play out? I am probably just going to take profits here at this previous high. OK, and since it's going into more profit. My original invalidation, wherever it might have been, right, really far below this zone, I can now move it up even more so that if it starts going against me, I can just get out even quicker than what I otherwise could have. So I'm going to go ahead and add another one to this. Now, keep in mind, this could have just as easily reversed and gone the other way, right? And whenever you add to a position, your position basis, meaning the average price at which you've entered your trades, also goes up. So the only way to control risk with doing it to keep the original one unit of risk is to just drag the invalidation slash stop loss areas up. Generally, you can put them right below the recent higher lows as the market goes in an uptrend. <laughs> we started on the one minute chart here normally for FX pairs since the FX pairs move such a small amount. I start on the higher time frames daily, four hour, one hour, 15 minute, five minute, one minute. I just make sure everything aligns before entering the trade. That's all I do. If, if everything looks like, like if all the time frames look like it's going to go in one direction, I just get in. And if you're doing that, you can go to lower time frames. This is the one second. I don't use the one second chart, my actual trading, but you get the point. If, if price is going to go up, right, it's not going to break that low. Whenever price goes up here and forms a set of higher lows and then breaks and makes a higher high, it, price is not going to break that, the, those set of lows right there if it's going to continue. And as price continues to go up, you can continue. There's no real swing points created yet. But if it were to come down here into that area and then bounce and then start going up from there, then you could say, all right, that's the next point at which, you know, at which price is going to, if, if price is going to continue the uptrend, it's not going to break out of the most recent higher low on the lower time frames, right? So now this has gone into profit and it's gone close to the resistance zone and we're almost to the resistance zone. For the sake of time and in the interest of time, I'm just gonna close this trade here. You can see we've made 30 cents. Absolutely destroyed it, right? I just killed it out of the 30 cents. What this is great. You're gonna be able to you'll be able to pay the tax on, on the extra guacamole that you get on your Chipotle burrito, thanks to me. And if you know, if you just want to thank me, you just send me your Bitcoin to my wallet for this amazing winning trade that we just had right here. I wanna also point out whenever you do this. Literally half of the trades will just straight start going into loss or they'll, they'll invalidate. They'll break past the previous low in the trend and you close it at a small profit, small loss or break even. Or you, if you're buying at a support zone, which is sort of what we did here, right? We, did, we just looked at it. We were mindless with the analysis, just said it looks like it's going up. And then after, after I said it looks like it's going up, I put this little zone here to say, okay, since I think it's going up, if it is going to continue going up, it's probably not going to knock out these lows. And the fact that it... The, so I'm just like, if it breaks below those lows, it'll just close the trade at a loss and it's not a big deal. When you lose a trade, you're in one position and you lose the trade and you close it. It's one R loss, worst case scenario. Whenever you win the trade, meaning when it starts to go into profit and it's showing you evidence that it's trying to go to your final target, which in a lot of cases in something like this, I would take profits at a higher high, you know, and then also I'll look at the previous like support resistance areas. And if there's a major resistance close by, then I'll just be like, eh, I'm just going to close it there. So if price were to do that, that's probably where I would have taken profits. Again, for the sake of time in this video, don't want to sit you here for 10 years. You've got plenty of things to do, I'm sure. I just took profits here just to show you the concept of it. Whenever it starts moving to profit, add to it, decrease the invalidation size. I use invalidation as a way from saying the, the distance from the entry to the point at which the trading idea invalidates. A lot of people just call this, where do you put your stop loss? How far away is that from your entry? Then you can calculate your lot size using a position size calculator. With that, I'll drag my stop loss distance slash invalidation distance up as the trade moves into profit. So the risk remains roughly the same if it continues. And then if it breaks out of the trend as it's going up there on the lower time frames, it's not a big deal. It's normally a small profit, small loss, or around a break even trade. If that happens 30% of the time, a nice win happens 30% of the time, and then a loss happens 30% of the time, 
you're ensuring that long term you're profitable. And this is an objective statement of fact, what I'm fixing to say next, which is the case that if you have a 50 50 win rate on average, but you just make more whenever you win by adding to the winners, then you lose when you lose by not adding to losers, then you are profitable. Make more in your winning trades than you lose on your losing trades. A great way to do this is by simply adding to winning trades and then cutting losses short. That being said, that is the end of the video, my friend. In this video, you've learned how to not be a complete, <laughs> just kidding. If you, in this video, you learned how to add to winning trades, at least how I add to winning trades. You learned how to not be a complete idiot and, and, uh, and cut losing trades very quickly. And you also saw a real example live. Again, keep in mind, it's going to be roughly a 50-50 win rate if you're just entering for whatever reason you think. You could use smart money, order block institution, fair value distribution gap, medium medium rare, Kobe stake, candlestick patterns. Or you can just buy it, support, and sell it resistance with the one-to-one -one risk reward ratio. You're going to have the same win rate, literally. But as it starts moving into profit, if you add to those, and then as it starts moving into loss, you just get out of those and you don't add to those in general. This ensures it, it at least sets you up to where you're going to be ahead of 90% of traders. Because worst case scenario, if you just enter with one-to-one -one and do nothing, you got a 50% win rate. I, I will virtually pat you on the back for that. That's great. You're doing better than 90% of people if you have a break-even win rate. You know what I mean? If you're a break-even trader. And then to get that from break-even to profitable, you start adding to winners and cutting losses short. It's a very simple process. Since I've repeated this about 100 times in this video, it's going to be a great place to end the video here. If you like this video, make sure to do whatever the hell you want. See you in the next one. See ya.